study that we did and eventually completed and was written up and published in 2006 was really because for many years I had been publishing data just from the hospital I worked. And we were getting comments that that was actually a very successful outcome because of the organisation, because of the midwives who worked well together, the really good rapport that we had with our doctors and that we worked alongside all, if you like, singing from the same song sheet. And actually, we couldn't prove that the results we were getting were not to do with the organisation. We had gut feelings that wasn't the case, but we didn't know that. So we joined together with nine other units around the United Kingdom. We had big units, little units. We had rural hospitals, big city centre hospitals. We had birth centres some which were situated next door to the hospital labour suite and others which weren't. So it's quite a good combination of, of the variety of birth centres, birth environments that we had in the UK. And all joined together to collect, as, you, as we said, about 2,000 women who had dry land births and then 2,000 uh, water birth women who we matched. We matched the women by several things. We matched them by how many babies they'd had, so their parity. We matched the women by age. We felt quite strongly as a group that different age women labour differently. So a 17-year-old was not going to be matched with a 40-year-old. We matched the women by their ethnicity. Again, quite a diverse population that we covered and we felt that was important as well. We matched the women whether or not they had a home or hospital water birth. And then three of those centres were already offering VBACs who wanted to use water. So they were matched by that. Sounds complicated, but it actually worked really, really well. We had an independent researcher from a local university who helped us with the data, and that was published, as I say, in 2006. Same issue, never out to prove that water was any better for mother and baby, but it was as good as dry land. The fact that the data we had and continue to have shows that water in many circumstances is better than dry land was almost just a bonus. That was never what we were out to prove. But the data supports what we'd always felt, what we'd published and what many of the units had as their intuition about the safety and effectiveness of the water. Well, we were looking at, we were looking at pure clinical outcomes. We looked at length of labour. We were pretty sure that the labours appeared to be shorter going to rhyme, shorter in the water. But the, the, that's what the intuition, that's what the midwives were telling us when we spoke to them. Some very, very experienced midwives with 20, 25 years of experience. And when we said to them about the water, what did they believe were the benefits, they were all saying the same. It's shorter in the water. So that's what we wanted to do. So we actually put that up as a marker and we actually identified that yes, the labours were shorter once the mother got in the water. And that wasn't about how far into labour she was when she got in. There was lots of information that people were trying to share with us, saying what we needed to do is not put the women in the pool until they were four centimetres or five centimetres. And examining a woman vaginally is not an exact science. Different women labour very differently from the same starting point. You know, if you're a first-time mum or a fourth-time mum, you're going to labour differently. So we didn't want to have a hang-up on how many centimetres. We just looked at the point of entry for her entering the water initially as pain relief, because that's why women go in the water initially. And we did find that from that point until she birthed, the labours were shorter than an equivalent woman who was matched on dry land. So that was one of the big bonuses. One of the other things that we found and women were saying to us was that they perceived and they'd heard they were less likely to get perineal trauma, less tears if they went in the water. And again, that's what we had found with the initial studies we'd been doing and other people, not just in this country, but around the world. But we wanted to see whether or not that was something as a UK environment we could actually say to women. And that's again what we found. We get less tears in the water. We do get some of the nasty tears, we do get some of the third degree tears, but they seem to be either the same as or less than if they're in water. And that's quite powerful to women as well. The balance of understanding, they may get a tear, but we're not showing it's going to be any worse than if they're in the water.